Welcome to Forum 360. I'm your host, Leah Love, where we have a global outlook from a local view. Today we have Ms. Shakara Ben, who is the owner of Creative Leo Designs, and she's going to talk to us about how she is impacting the Northeast Ohio community with art. Hello, Ms. Shakara Ben. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing well. So tell me a little bit about Creative Leo Designs. So Creative Leo Designs is a design company that focus on a lot of different areas, but mainly trying to give back to the community by dedicating a percentage of all of its revenue to go back to the community. Awesome, so how is the revenue distributed throughout the community? Well, our goal is to give back 15%, um, and we do that by doing free art classes and scholarships. Okay, um, so you do graphic, what all services do you do with your company? We do full service graphic design, web design, event planning for corporate and nonprofit and special occasions such as weddings, graduations, anniversaries, you name it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what is your mission and passion behind starting your company? My mission was that knowing creativity was a part of my life growing up and I do feel that I would not be the person I am without having that creative push from my teachers in school, from my parents, and them immersing me in different arts growing up. And I knew that that still needed to be in our community. Um, I do believe that everybody has a creative passion inside of them. We all have creativity and without creativity, the world would not be um, what it is now. We would have not evolved um, in any of the things that we kind of do on a day to day basis from our cell phones to how we dress and our fashion, how our fashion may go back to mm -hmm. fashions time ago. Um, so I do feel that we all live amongst a lot of creative beings, and without that um, growth being added to it, that you won't, we won't have creative in the future. So that's why we want to give back to and scholarships to make sure that our future creatives can move forward and create new things, and maybe one day we will be actually flying in hover rounds. Oh, you want to fly around in a hover round? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. We'll see. Um, so just a little bit on your journey of becoming an entrepreneur. What was that like? Was it scary? Uh, what made you finally jump out and decide to do it? Absolutely. It was absolutely scary. Um, but I had to dig deep down inside myself and realize that, that this is something that I can do. And I do have something to share with the communities that we serve. Um, what pushed me to do it was my friends and family. Um, I've been doing this for nine years, and they've recognized my talents and knew that, hey, you should take another step. And although I was at first nervous, I realized that through research and learning a few things business-wise that, you know, this is something that I can do, and I shouldn't allow, I shouldn't stop myself from doing it. And so um, on August 9th, I decided to launch the business, finally, into the community. <laughs> and I actually had a great time. Um, I was nervous, but now I'm not. Now I'm ready to get into the community and meet um, everyone, get the, my art classes going, and just start doing a lot of creative things in the community. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, you mentioned that you wanted to focus more on the community um, it versus what my mind might think of going into a school or another um, area that you could go into. What made you decide to do community-based versus any other area? Well, I figure that the community, we they have our classes at community centers and things like that. And sometimes you have to pay for certain things. And if you if people have to pay for it, they may not be able to have access to it because they may have to decide to choose that or versus paying for a yoga class or something that is health beneficial for them that they need to do to work on them. But art can also be a healthy source, a stress reliever. Um, also, it finesses a person's in, um, natural pheromones to be happy. So I figured if I bring that to the community for free, I'll be able to reach as many people as possible and Persons won't have to decide on doing that or paying for like karate classes for their kids or anything like that. They can come as a family and enjoy this and, and create memories from just that moment and take away a piece that they can put in their home and it goes back to that memory. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I feel that 
as an event planning company, we can create designs and web. We're creating memories throughout um, individuals' lives. So I figured if we have free community classes, they'll have something to remember that they did as a family or individually. Or you may have someone who's in their uh, middle age and they decide that they want to start having some me time and they may come to enjoy the art class because of that, but that's still a memory of time and in that moment of time they're at ease. So that's why I decided to make to focus on that. And I also decided that I, I wanted to look at the workplace community because um, I used to manage a company, I was a director of operations, and I do know that there's stress in the workplace. And it is very important to, to balance that out. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to also bring the classes to workplaces as well to offer a balance. Um, a lot of employers may offer counseling or different outlet services, and I would like to be a part of that collaboration and come into the workplace and do an art class, maybe during the lunch hour, that, again, creating memories is, is, is helping the employees relax and be more at ease in the workplace, especially in some strong, um, high-stress workplace um, places. Absolutely. Um I do know that a lot of people are moving, especially with the mental health push, um, yes. to really make sure that people are taking care of themselves and therapy of different sorts is um, different sources is a really good way to help balance that out, um, to help combat that. So you offer free art classes. How are you able to offer free art classes? Well, and tell me about them. How does that go? What does that look like? So I offer them. Um, I'm able to offer them by making sure that. Oh, I keep, I let everyone know up front that I work with, that a portion of what I'm doing is going to go back into that. I've had some um, organizations that I work with decide to donate more mm -hmm. to that cause because I let them know that 15% was going to go back. And they said, well, let's try to make it 25%, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and with that being generated, I'm able to provide these art classes. These art classes will come with all the supplies. Um, all, all individuals have to do is just show up and be ready to express themselves creatively. The class sessions are called Creative Art Expressions, and they are open to anyone, and you do not have to be um, skillful in art in any way. Um, and all you have to do is just come and enjoy, and you'll take away your peace. Um, the classes are gonna be held at community centers. Um, right now, I'm partnering with the Cleveland Clinic. Um, where I'm going to be doing their eight-week health challenge. I'm in their Tri-City challenge, and I'm also in their Glenville Huff um, challenge as well. So I'll be doing classes with them. I'm going to be doing classes on Mondays and Wednesdays. The kickoffs was last week and the one the week before for the other location. And so, anybody can come to those? Anybody can come to those as long as they register with the Cleveland Clinic okay. and they complete the assessment process okay. to become part of the challenge. Um, they have to get some screenings and things like that um, because you track, they track your blood pressure and things like that during the challenge. And those are on Mondays and Wednesdays at two separate locations um, in Cuyahoga County. One's at South Point Hospital and the other one's at the Louis Stokes Cleveland Clinic building. Okay. And so I, just, I decided, you know, I wanted to, to touch back yes in the community but this was a great opportunity because it also is all the classes our classes are designed to towards health mm -hmm. which I never knew that I would be entering that so <laughs> it, it challenged me but I came up with um, six art classes that are going to take place through this series I'm really excited about that today is the first class now are the six classes the same or do they have different themes or different things that you're going to work on in each class or session? Yes, they have different themes and each one is geared to as a stepping stone per se to get them through the challenge. The first art class today, um, this week for both sessions, are going to focus on reflection. What do we see when we look in the mirror? And as Michael Jackson will say, the man in the mirror, you know. So what do we see? How can we be that change that we want to be? Mm -hmm. And what is the change that we want to see? Mm -hmm. Well, when we look in the mirror, we, we, we are connecting with ourselves and have to change through this challenge and be able to address completing their challenge. Mm -hmm. So that is their first um, art project. Okay. And then what are the other ones? The second one is going to be um, a journal. Okay. They're going to design the journal and create the journal, though. And it's a way for them to jot down daily some of the challenges that they may have be, have to overcome. Um, I know for personally, one of mine will have to be no fast food. 
I probably have to write that every day in that journal um, because it's, that's something that with my lifestyle is going to affect me. Um, the, the third one is going to be taking a look at what, is, what do you love and who do you love. And so I, there's a picture frame and I, um, I requested everyone bring a picture, but not of themselves, but of one person that, as to why they're doing this challenge. We're all, I told them that we're all going to do this challenge, but it's for one reason that you're really trying to do the challenge. Um, and who is that for? Or what is it for? It may be that you want to get in that bathing suit. It may be. So we're going to look at that and figure out why and who and what you want to do this for. But write the reasons behind it as well. And they're also going to create the frame as well. Um, the other one is, has to do with looking back. So they're going to create t-shirts. The front of the t-shirt is going to be the person they are now at this point in this challenge, the person they're going to become in this challenge, which is their futuristic self. The back of the shirt is going to be the past. As you, as, you know, if the person turns away from you and walk away, you want to see their back. So we're not going to look back anymore. We're going to move forward with who we are now. So they're going to decorate the shirt to say, this is who I am now, who I want to become. These are the changes that I have made in my life. This is my past. Mm -hmm. We're not going to look back in the past because it's behind us. Right. And that is the combination of the two shirts, the shirts designs. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the sessions, we're going to have our show finale at the um, finale event. And we're going to want to bring in some local art judges to judge, uh, not just strangely, because again, this is just people expressing themselves, but so we can pick some winners and give away some prizes. And um, we're going to sponsor two individuals, one from each um, session, and they're going to win a big art um, package, one that they can take with them and move forward with their personal art. So those are the classes in a nutshell. Wow, those sound amazing. Yes, I'm excited about them. Yeah. I'm really excited. There's a lot of touch points in developing um, yourself and your creativity, but when you know yourself a little bit better and you're able to be more confident in that, you are able to go out and be more inspirational and have more hope and have more drive and determination to do the things that you would like to do. Yes. <clears throat> If you are just tuning in, I am talking to Misha Carbin, the owner of Creative Leo Designs, and she's talking to us about how she's using art to impact our Northeast Ohio community. So, um, what sets your company apart from all the other design, graphic design companies that we have? Well, besides me, <laughs> I would like What's to... about yourself? <laughs> I would like to say that I, I feel that what sets me up what sets us apart is that I have a personal touch. Um, one of my beliefs is that you should treat people how you want to be treated. And so having said that, I normally treat everybody like family. And so I, I go with that approach because sometimes when you're designing something, um, a person may not know what they want initially. Um, they may be driving past something, have a second thought and need to call me and say, oh, I changed my mind. That doesn't mean I need to charge them for that. Mm -hmm. I believe in creative thought. I believe in the process of it. And so I think what sets me apart is that I'm willing to work with everyone that I come into contact with to get their final product. And it, ha it doesn't require um, me to, them to have to pay for different changes or anything like that because it's a creative process and I believe and support that. The other thing is that some design companies, they may be able to do event planning, but they may not be able to do graphic design. They may not be able to do web design. So we're a full service design company because we can not only plan your event, we can design your t-shirts for your event, your media for your event, market your event as well, and help you reach as many um, people as you would like to reach by doing that. But I'm also, um, we're also a hands-on company so a lot of things can be created, uh, expressions, creative art expressions too, to make. So no, you don't have to order your centerpieces. Maybe I can make them. I'm also about breaking down the value, getting more m value for the money that we may have, for the budget that is set. How can we utilize that? In addition to that, I, my green aspect to the company is how are we going to use these products after the event? Can they be repurposed in a way that maybe um, someone else can, can maybe use them 
or maybe can it be given back to different um, areas in the community that may be in need of things such as centerpieces can also be um, depending on what type of centerpiece can be given to a certain nursing homes and things like that for their cafeteria and eating area and that that alone might brighten up their day but versus sitting in that person's basement mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i bring a different outside of the box look to um, how to work with new designs and so one of the things we focus on is creatively designing new boundaries because there we all have those fine lines and boxes that we sometimes live in and i have um, i've broken out of the box and i'm ready to create new organic boxes in the community awesome let's break out of the box <laughs> um <clears throat> do you have any upcoming events that anybody should be aware of Yes, so currently um, I'm planning a Andi Rise Up Women's Conference. It's gonna be in January in Cuyahoga County. The location is not set, but follow-up can be also um, reviewed on my website. Okay, and what's your website? CreativeLeoDesigns.com. Okay, and um, so if somebody wants to contact you and they, they wanna know what the process is of being creative or coming up with their event and things like that, what would that process look like? That process looks like um, I, I do a free one hour consultation and we discuss what it is um, you want to creatively express. Um, whether it's an event, whether you need a t-shirt, whether you're a small business starting up and you need to figure out what is my logo going to look like mm -hmm. and how and why. Mm -hmm. um, so we meet, we can meet in person, we can speak over the phone, we can Skype, whichever is best fit for them. Um, after we come up with that creative process, we, I go to work. So um, I'm gonna be looking at the time turnaround that's necessary as well. So we go through the consultation to figure out when you're gonna need this product or when you're gonna need the event done or things like that. And then we make a booking and then after that, start sending you samples. Um, I create vision boards for all the events that I do. Um, I also create timelines for all the events that I do as well so that things are in place accordingly, especially dealing with other vendors. Mm -hmm. um, I make sure that the caterer is <coughs> in the loop of things or the lighting person is in the loop of things, things of that nature. Um, but I can, they can find all the information out on the website as well. And pricing is also on the website as well. And all services um, right now are 20% off. Awesome. Special incentive for our guest today. Um, so what would you say your average turnaround time is? For design services, a t-shirt design, my average turnaround is 24 hours. Okay. Um, depending on if it's a more detailed design, maybe 48 hours. Um, website design, turnaround time is at least a week minimum. Okay. okay. But again, if there's maybe about 20 more pages or things like okay, that, you know. a little longer. Um, and then if it's an event, it depends on what key components to the event, but everything does have a turnaround time that's set to it through the process of the event, and that's given on an event timeline. Gotcha, gotcha. Going through your, with your consultation, you'll mm -hmm. be able to understand all of that. Um, so what have been some of the issues that you encounter on your end that kind of impede you from being as effective as you could with the customer. So maybe this is something that they could learn, um, be able to have together before they get to you to help that process go a little bit smoother. Well, I would have to say that sometimes we, um, my customers may think that I'm not creative. I, I don't know what I want or I can't. And I would say that sometimes um, I have to open that up. And that, that's a process to try to open up that creative being that is in all of us um, because they had an idea, which is why they contacted us to begin with. And they say, well, I, I saw it, I liked it, but that's all I know. But what colors are you looking for? How do you want it to appeal, appear? What room, when you walk into the room, do you want to say, wow, do you want your breath taken away? Do you want to feel that it is intimate? You know, so sometimes that um, those questions are added to the process just a little bit. But I encourage everyone before contacting anyone to, to just realize that you are creative too. And, and our creative energy is what's making this process come together. So you don't, ha so you don't have to worry about 
being a perfect creative or anything like that because that doesn't exist. We are our organic creatives mm -hmm. and our energy pushes and pulls from each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that sometimes that may impede on the design process only because um, you want to, I want to make sure that I'm giving the product that they want. But again, sometimes people feel that I'm not, I'm not as creative as you are. So I'm scared to say this, or I'm scared to say that. Yeah. And a little song and dance may happen, but again, I'm, I'm supporting the creative process. Yeah. Um, I know as a, as a hairstylist, I really focus on educating my clients. And I give them certain things that they should look for if they ever were to go to another stylist or um, if they have to leave and go out of town and they're looking for a stylist. What would be some of the things that you would tell somebody to look for while they're searching and seeking out a graphic um, design artist? The well, first thing I will have to say is that that artist has to be willing to collaborate with you creatively. Um, they should not try to push their ideas as if your idea you came to them with is, is not good or is not um, complete or that doesn't make sense, things like that. They should be willing to work with you to develop the vision that you had when, they, when you came to them. Um, so I would say that they would have to be um, compassionate and have passion to the creative design process. Um, they will also have to have, uh, make sure they have the knowledge base um, to design what you're looking for. Um, sometimes design, a designer may say that they can create something, but you might want to ask them, what software do you use? What is your background in this design? Um, can I see some of your work? Have you, have I seen your work? Things like that, because there's a lot of design software out there. And I'm not saying that I swear by Adobe, but <laughs> I am saying that um, some design software uh -huh. cannot be best suitable for what you may need. And so in the end, you may have a produced product. While it might be great, it might not be the best mm -hmm. because it could have been better depending on the software. And that knowledge base is definitely important when you're doing graphics. You know, one of the things I ran into once was I sent over a picture um, to have something done and they had to blow up the picture and it was super grainy mm -hmm. and they couldn't see it, which also happened again another time with my logo. Um, and that was just a matter of them letting me know ahead of time that this pixel isn't right and right. it needs to be in a certain, whatever you guys say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know, but uh, I learned to ask that question now. Yes. Is this is this picture okay? Can it be blown up and still not, you know, look grainy? So those are, um, like you said, some of the things that you just don't know mm -hmm. that you need to ask and um, look for with that. So I like that about the software. Um, so you did mention about scholarships real quick in your model. So how can people apply for them, or how are they distributed? So they um, can apply on the website. Okay. Um, the applications are there for download, and then they have to do an email submission mm -hmm. um, to the address in the email in the application. So there are four scholarships. Um, one is for mentoring. So I'm going to have two mentees um, who will work directly with me, um, who want to be creative themselves in the future. They may uh, be in high school, 11th or 12th grade, and want to major in something creative in college. And I want to help them grow that. I want them to go into college already confident in their field and confident in their skill set. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to college, I was not confident in my um, skill set. My major was interior design and I was intimidated. Mm -hmm. And I knew that um, as the years got by, I got better with it. But I think if I would have went into college a little bit more confident, it would have made the experience yeah. different just yeah. because um, interior design is a very, very competitive mm -hmm. and uh, major. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work and it's a lot of new things that you're learning. Um, so, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So I want to help. I want to help two high school students um, be prepared for that step and yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. um, then the other one is a creative writing scholarship. Um, so I believe that again, creativity has, has no boundaries to it, and writing is something that we all have come to love. It is something that dates back to the end of time, meaning that. 
that we used to read things that are old, things that are new, and it helps you to understand, helps you captivate things better. So I do believe in um, creative writing. The okay. other scholarships are for supplies. Mm -hmm. So if you're in high school going into college, mm -hmm. um, have a supply scholarship for those who are gonna be creative majors. And then if you're in college, sophomore, I mean, excuse me, freshman through senior in college, I also have a supply scholarship as well. One of the things I learned in college is that supplies cost a great deal. And some semesters I had to figure out how to get my supplies and I want to assist in that little hurdle. Awesome. Well, I want to show you guys this real quick before we leave. This is an example of one of her t-shirts. Um, that you can see is just absolutely beautiful. And this is a booklet that she did as well. Um, so if you have anything that needs to be done for your event, like she said, she is multi-talented. Yes. Um, she does amazing, great work and just very professional to work with. Um, so I want to thank you again for coming and joining us today. I am your host, Leah Love. Thank you for tuning in to Forum 360, where we have a global outlook from a local view. Have a great weekend. Forum 360 is brought to you by John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, the Akron Community Foundation, Hudson Community Television, the Rubber City Radio Group, Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron, Blue Green, Electric Impulse Communications, and Forum 360 supporters.